Ethereum Proof of Work sees replay exploit for the 200 ETH W days after a rocky start. So if you guys aren't familiar, Ethereum essentially has ended up with two different uh, chains, which we'll be talking about here in just a second. But this is an exploit on the ETH W chain and the exploit took place on a contract, however, and does not affect the main Ethereum Proof of Work network itself. So apparently this is going to be okay but we are talking about faulty third party stuff already happening on the network ethereum proof of work the version of ethereum blockchain that continues to run on a proof of work consensus mechanism experienced a replay exploit over the weekend due to a faulty third party contract developers of ethereum proof of work were alerted of the issues and immediately took steps to rectify the problem the blockchain was established as a fork of the Ethereum network, which switched to a proof of stake consensus mechanism on Thursday in an event known as the merge. The proof of stake network now continues as Ethereum. The replay exploit refers to the same transaction being duplicated on both chains when they're not supposed to. This means if a user transacted on Ethereum proof of work, the same was executed on Ethereum, which eventually allows attackers to illicitly trick smart contracts into releasing tokens from one chain, even as the actual transaction was executed on another chain. So attackers use the Omni bridge of the Gnosis network to conduct the exploit. Some 200 weighted ether W ETH was transferred through the bridge on Saturday and the same transaction was relayed on the proof of work chain, resulting in the attacker gaining 200 ETH W or approximately $1,600 at the time. Faulty data from the ETH POW network's chain ID, which is something that we talked about and I thought that the chain ID was resolved, but clearly it was not. Um, and this was a big issue that, that was coming up quite a bit moving into it. So, the uh, the faulty data from that chain ID used by a contract caused the issue, and that is coming from security firm BlockSec. A chain ID is a set of numbers used by a browser-based crypto wallet like MetaMask to sign transactions for the network. An incorrect chain ID causes transactions to fail because users aren't connected to the correct network. And we had a guide on how to connect to that network. If you guys want, you can reclaim or claim if you have any ETH in your MetaMask, you know, some ETH W. But, you know, that ETH W is obviously going down in value quite quickly. BlockSec warned that the issue might eventually cause the balance of the chain contract deployed on P the proof of work chain to be drained. Meanwhile, Ethereum proof of work developers said in a Sunday post that the attack exploited the contract vulnerability of the bridge and not the blockchain itself. We have contacted the bridge in every uh, in every way and informed them of the risks it said. Let me get some water. Hmm. Bridges need to correctly verify the actual chain ID of the cross-chain messages the developers wrote. As such, the network saw glitches on its first day with users stating that they weren't able to access the blockchain servers using public information provided by ETH POW. Coindesk verified the claims and wasn't able to access ETH proof of works web servers using those links provided. That was early on. Now we can access them now. ETHW tokens stumbled uh, in the past 24 hours following the exploit, falling some 37% and extending the weekly loss to over 80%. Now, of course, it's hard to determine on all of these things between, you know, uh, the actual coins falling and the projects themselves falling down. And then, of course, uh, the overall market going down. I usually try to tie it as closely to like whatever Bitcoin's doing. So, you know, right now, for example, uh, Bitcoin's down 2.84%, but Ethereum is down 5%. I would say that there is definitely less trust in Ethereum looking at that based off of that than there is with the entire market in general, right? So that's kind of like a brief way that I look at it, but it does get more interesting because ETHW at least let you kind of, it was a copy pasta of Ethereum, but it let you basically act like you were still functioning on Ethereum to a certain extent, like if you were a user, you're technically all your tokens, all your Ethereum moved over, but there's another one. And actually, so this is where things get confusing. The ETHW token on Justin Sun's Poly, uh, Polo Neex is not the same 
as the one run by Chandler Go. And there's actually a whole other name for it. So we had to clarify this so that we understand what is happening, right? So the Forks ETHW token dropped 70% on technical glitches and early supporter Apollo Neex's decisions to back a different little known blockchain. So this is where things get weird. In stark contrast to the mostly flawless execution of the Ethereum merge, technical snafus and de uh, defections have marred the new fork blockchain by crypto miners aiming to preserve the old proof of work network. The project tagged as Ethereum POW fell flat right at the start as users complained about glitches in crypto exchanges Polo Neex, where Tron, founder and early cheerleader of Ethereum POW, Justin Sun, is an investor, decided to support a rival proof of work fork. On top of that, it appears many crypto miners shifted their resources to focus on Ethereum Classic, as data suggests. And of course, Everybody's completely aware that like while Ethereum Classic has slower development, etc., it is solid and it has been working as a proof of work chain for quite some time. There's no real need to go ahead and try to build another chain, especially with people that are not as experienced in the industry, right? That being said, like we saw with GPU miners, where did the GPU miners go? I mean, a majority of them, frankly, went to Ergo. Why is that? Because Ergo is essentially uh, Ethereum, but built from the ground up with better technology, and it is remaining proof of work. So the, uh, the ASIC guys that were mining Ethereum, they went to Ethereum Classic, right? Because Ethereum Classic makes the most sense. You got a top 100 chain blah, blah, blah. And the GPU guys went to Ergo. I mean, it's pretty much, that's how it went down. There was no need for these proof of work chains other than to, I guess, make a quick buck like we talked about before. The new ETH W tokens price tumbled as low as $8 on Friday. I think it's $5 right now. And some exchanges that listed the current, uh, uh, on some exchanges that listed the cryptocurrency, a 70% drop from the $30 level where it mostly traded earlier this week. Um, so here's the rival fork thing that's going on as Ethereum got close to finishing its transition to proof of stake technology with the merge, a shift that rendered miners process and equipment obsolete Chandler go a Chinese based Ethereum miner came up with an alternative plan. He proposed in August to create a duplicate version of Ethereum blockchain with a fork that would retain the mining based proof of work consensus mechanism after the merge. Everyone who held Ether would be entitled to receive the same amount of the new blockchain's native token, ETHW, with an airdrop. The fork was scheduled to happen the day after the merge. Amid the initial buzz, some exchanges rushed to list a derivative of the potential blockchain's would-be token, including crypto exchange Palo Neex. Sun, an investor in Palo Neex, became one of the loudest proponents of the proof-of-work fork of Ethereum, saying it is a tried and tested system for the second largest blockchain. Then, on the day before the ETHW fork, Apollo Neex surprised many by announcing that it would su support a little-known different fork on the network, Ethereum Fair. Now, Ethereum Fair is one that I saw pop up and I started doing research and I found this article. Things are very weird right now, but we try to cover it. So, Ethereum Fair is essentially a completely different Ethereum proof-of-work uh, fork. And the token is ETF, and this is the one that Apollo Neex supports. Extremely confusing, yes. Quote, based on the market situation, consensus of users and the community, Apollo Neex has decided to choose the fork of Ethereum Fair, which is supported by the community's majority and more proof-of-work computing power as the main chain for ETHW tokens, the crypto exchange said, said in a statement on Thursday. Information is scarce about Ethereum Fair. According to the project's Twitter feed, ETF tokens will be distributed among Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ether Classic, and Class ZZ token holders. So they're not even like, it's not like you have Ethereum, they're copying Ethereum over and you get Ethereum as a result. It's like, we're going to distribute tokens based off of your Bitcoin and Dogecoin holdings? Like what the is even going on, bro? It doesn't even make sense. Paul and EX said users already received the tokens indicating the blockchain went live. Crypto exchanges such as Hubai and Gate.io also listed ETF and trading started early on Friday. 
Go, the originator of Ethereum Proof of Work, said in a tweet that Paulo and EX made a huge mistake by backing a rival fork. I mean, I, I think both of y'all are dead on arrival. That's my <laughs> I don't trust either one of y'all. So, like, I mean, two of y'all together, is that less trustworthy or more trustworthy to y'all? I'd like to hear y'all's thoughts and opinions in the live chat and comment section below. With Chandler Go and Justin Sun teaming up on a single project make you feel better about it or them splitting it up and having two different projects make you feel better about it. Kevin Zoe, head of crypto hedge fund Galios Capital, predicted earlier that proof of work forks would proliferate after Ethereum's merge. At press time, Ethereum fares traded at $17 on Apollo and EX and ETHW changed hands at $12. So clearly Ethereum fares doing better at this point. Analysts doubt the longevity of any proof of work fork, but many traders plan to make money on them well before the merge. Their strategy was to buy or borrow ETH to be selected for the airdrop, then after that claim the ETHW tokens. They would dump them on the mar then dump them on the market. Since the tokens were free, any profits were seen as a bonus for holding ETH. This put a huge selling pressure on ETHW, especially because few big investors ever took the breakaway project seriously. I spoke to a couple of over-the-counter desks, and they're saying everyone is selling. There's no buyers. Kevin Kane, co-founder of digital asset hedge fund BK Coin Capital, told CoinDesk. Go said Friday that CoinDesk, uh, to CoinDesk that 90% of the miners of Ethereum Proof of Work Network will go bankrupt. When asked about the initial technical problems, he rated the start mediocre. Now, he said 90% of all miners, not just Ethereum Proof of Work miners. He was saying of all miners i think ethereum miners because bitcoin miners are a little bit different right um even though we are seeing this affect bitcoin in general either way what do you need to know uh ethereum fair is justin sons ethereum pow is chandler goes and they are two different forks and they function completely different with ethereum fair essentially being an airdrop that is based off of your bitcoin and dogecoin holdings and etc within the centralized exchange of Apollo Neex, making it kind of absolutely ridiculous and pointless. And at this point, uh, you couldn't even borrow against it, I guess, like you could on Chandler Goes to make a quick buck and sell it on the exchange. At this point, nobody is buying Ethereum proof of work or ETHW, so mining it is um, essentially useless. I wouldn't recommend it. That being said, you know, that's not financial advice. You never know what's going to happen these days in these markets, but. I, you know, as far as like ETH P POW, I don't see a reason for it to really trade much. And I think Ethereum Classic, as far as the, uh, as far as the ASICs are concerned, will remain king for now. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.